it is Alana from Quench, and today I wanted to talk to you about one of our most popular products. It is our Fresh Mouth Toothpaste. Yeah, we are the people that make turmeric toothpaste. And um, just to say a little something, I noticed that Colgate is starting to put turmeric in their stuff. We were doing it first. Anyways, what that tells me is that the big guys are realizing that going chemical free and adding in different botanicals and things of that nature is an important feature of oral health. So let me talk to you a bit today and I wanna juxtapose our 100% food grade um, ingredient tooth polish to your commercial toothpaste. The ones that use all sorts of chemicals and things of that nature. One of the things that I think a lot of people don't really think about in terms of toothpaste is it's going in our mouths. We're absorbing it. So doesn't it make more sense to put something that is 100% food grade in your mouth rather than putting things that contain chemicals that have been linked to all such sorts of icky stuff? So in this video today, what I'm going to do is talk to you about those chemicals, what their impact is on our body. Then I'm gonna talk to you about the ingredients that we use and how they help to enhance your oral health and what they do. And um, I really wanna start the conversation. So wherever you happen to be seeing this, whether it's on my blog, YouTube, whether it's in Pinterest or wherever, um, please go ahead, leave a comment, go to our Facebook, go to our um, Instagram, whatever it is, but start the conversation. Um, you can go to our website at www quench naturel and that's n-a-t-u-r-e-l.com and reach out and send a com comment on that because we love to talk to you and we love to like go back and forth and just learn from each other anyways so let's start with taking a look at some of the ingredients that are present in um, commercial based okay food. so the first thing i wanted to show you was some of the products that use some of the chemicals that are found in our toothpaste. Um, now, obviously, the chemicals that are used in these products, we've got weed killer, we've got antifreeze, bug killer, dish soap, um, antibiotics. I thought it was really important to just let you see what some of these chemicals are used in. And yes, obviously, in your toothpaste, they are not in as high a concentration. The last thing I want you to do is think I'm trying to fear monger, but I want it to be visually plain what types of chemicals are used in commercial toothpaste. On the flip side, you come over here to what Quench Naturel uses, you've got turmeric, calcium carbonate, birch xylitol, food grade diatomaceous earth, essential oils, and they all go in to this really cool product that you scoop out of a jar with a lovely fully biodegradable bamboo spoon and you put it into your mouth and you use. Um, while we're looking at this, I just wanted to talk a bit about food grade diatomaceous earth. And the reason why I wanna talk about this is that some people have heard of diatomaceous earth because in its non-food grade state, it can be used to keep pests away. But in this food grade consistency, it's a very fine powder, as you can see. People actually consume this, they drink it in water, and it actually helps to detoxify your system. It is the detoxifying reasons that we use. I will talk more about it, but since I was showing you this video, I wanted to, or from this angle, I wanted to share with you what this was so that you knew that there's a very distinct difference between food grade diatomaceous earth and just regular diatomaceous earth. Okay, so I'm back. I got all those icky pesticides out. And just a little disclaimer, the antifreeze is from an old car that um, is no longer with us. Um, it served us well while it was here. But anyways, um, the weed killer and the bug killer are actually things that have been in my garage for about eight years now. We stopped using them a long time ago and I just remembered that they were in there. I probably need to figure out how to get rid of them properly. Um, and then the dish soap, you might've seen that I wrote dish soap on there because we do currently use a um, natural eco-friendly dish soap that doesn't have the chemicals that I put that bottle there to represent. And um, 
The antibiotics, those are things for um, a family member. I am not completely against antibiotics. I just really do believe that we need to be careful on how we use them and the frequency of which we use them. Um, I think that too much use of them are why we're seeing a lot of really what they call super bugs and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm not anti-antibiotics, but I wanted to, to show you all. I got all that icky stuff away, so now we can get down to the nitty gritty and have a conversation. Um, just in full disclosure, I go and I've done some research and I've pulled up a lot of stuff, and I'm gonna be actually using my notes here. Why? Because it's very technical. There's a lot that go into this, and I wanna make sure that I'm telling you what I believe to be the truth, and again, I'm totally open to conversation back and forth on these issues. Um, but this is what fuels why Gina and I are so passionate about um, creating not just great facial care and things like that, but tooth polish and deodorant and things because we really believe that these everyday products that so many of us use um, need to be better about removing the chemicals and we're giving you that option. So we wanna talk about it. Anyways, um, your mouth. Our mouths are kind of one of the centers of our body. It is. Um, it can impact our bodies in terms of heart disease, diabetes, even osteoporosis. Um, what passes through our mouths lead obviously through to the rest of our body. Um, it can be closely related to the gut, which we know the gut is very, um, very powerful and a huge part of our overall health. So keeping good oral health is so much more than just avoiding cavities and having fresh breath. It really impacts everything. So that's why it's super critical that what you're using in your mouth is really doing its job, but is healthy for you. So that's that. Um, in our mouths, we have a mucous membrane. That mucous membrane is what um, protects our body from certain chemicals. But when we put toxins into our mouth, it actually breaks down that mucous membrane, which makes us more susceptible for these different illnesses. It makes us more susceptible for canker sores and um, just other sores within our mouths that, um, that we don't want, clearly. Um, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is a chemical called titanium dioxide. And so what is titanium dioxide? Titanium dioxide is strictly a marketing tool. It is something that makes the toothpaste white. They make it white, why? Because they said people want white. They want white teeth, so they're gonna feel more comfortable putting a paste that is white onto their, into their mouth. And I will say, it's really funny because since we've been selling our toothpaste, which as you can see, is not white, um, one of the biggest things when we would hear objections like, oh, you put that in your mouth? Oh, it's yellow, what's that? Well, you know, we explain to most of our customers, or, you know, why, and they obviously understand the purpose behind it, so they see past the fact that this is yellow, but you'd be surprised how many people cannot see past the fact that our tooth polish is yellow. Um, for those people, we did make a baking soda version, um, and what's really cool is that our toothpaste actually really tastes good too. That was one thing that we said we were not going to be another natural toothpaste that didn't taste good. So our baking soda tooth polish is for those people who cannot see past the white. Um, so for you, please use that. It's amazing as well. It has all of the great ingredients except for our turmeric. Um, but this turmeric is just lovely, and I'll talk to you more about why turmeric is so great for your mouth, but um, going back to the titanium dioxide, the manufacturers are actually pretty right. Having that white toothpaste does allow them to sell more of it. Titanium dioxide has absolutely no other positive thing for your mouth besides making it white. Um, it is safe for topical use. Um, they haven't been able to determine if it's um, absorbed into the mucous membrane of your mouth. On your skin, it does not get absorbed. Um, so again, I don't want this to be a fear-mongering thing. I'm gonna share with you the good, the bads, the maybes, because I want this to be a fair representation. But to me, I don't need something that's just useless in my product just to make it look pretty. One of the things that we kind of built this company on, and if you see it says, um, because every ingredient matters. We 
are demystifying the ingredient list. We want you to know what you're putting on your body and why we're using botanicals and herbs and so forth because every ingredient matters. So titanium dioxide doesn't need to be in your toothpaste. There's no value to it except for it makes it white. They're saying that you're not smart enough to make a decision if it's not white. I think you are smart enough. Anyways, the second one that I wanted to look at is triclosan. Triclosan, okay. So what is it? It's a pesticide, so that bug killer. It is an antibacterial agent. It, um, it um, in numerous studies, has been linked to endocrine disruption, which are your hormones. Hormone disruption, which leads to all sorts of issues. The, this is what I found really, really interesting. The FDA has actually banned its use in topical products. So body soaps, body washes, um, lotions, that sort of thing. It has banned the use of triclosan. But then they haven't banned the use of it in something that you put into your mouth. My question is, if your body and your skin absorb everything it comes into contact with within five seconds, how much more readily do you think your body absorbs what you put in your mouth? Which is designed to absorb even more so and that sort of thing. So this is part of one of those ingredients that break down that mucous membrane that open you up to illness and various things. And it's put in there strictly to, um, it's put in there to give shelf life and that sort of thing and to keep it stable and that kind of thing. But there are other ways that you can stabilize your product without having to put harsh chemicals. The next product or ingredient that I wanted to talk to you about is sodium laurel sulfite. So what is that? That's dish soap, basically. It lathers, it's a foaming agent. They use it in dish soap. Um, not in the soap that I have, because I don't use that type of dish soap. That's why I have to write little notes on there to show you <laughs> a representation of dish soap. But at any rate, it's a foaming agent. So when you're brushing your teeth and you get all that foam, you're using the same stuff that I use or different people use to clean their dishes and it's in your mouth. Why? You know, again, I had somebody in the early days of making this say, your toothpaste doesn't foam. It doesn't. You are 100% correct. But I guarantee you, if you try this toothpaste that is yellow and doesn't foam, that you're going to find that your mouth is cleaner than it's ever been just from regular brushing. I guarantee it. Um, so, um, sodium laurel sulfite, um, it is an insecticide. It has been linked to organ toxicity. It um, strips away the lining of your mouth. It helps, it will um, open you up for canker sores. There have been more than 16,000 um, studies that have mentioned and looked at the toxicity of, sorrel, laurel, of sodium laurel sulfide. And here's what's really crazy about it. We look on our ingredient list to tell us what's in something and we wanna trust what's being told to us. This product is marketed and it has actually 10 different names that it goes under so that they can take, so you think, oh, sodium little sulfite, I've heard that that's bad. So you look to see if it's in that product and you don't see it, so you think, okay, good, they've taken it out. <gasps> Maybe not, because it is under so many different names. Sodium dioxyl sulfite, monodosyl ester, sodium salt. I'm, by, I'm probably not saying these things correctly, but you know, sulfuric acid, sodium salt, sulfite acid, monodosyl ester, sodium salt, sulfite acid. Um, the list goes on. There's 10 different types of ingredients that this, this one ingredient, the sodium laurel sulfite, is being called just to keep you in the dark and keep you confused and keep you not knowing what is truly in your product. You have to ask yourself, why is that allowed to happen? I don't really have the answer, but the FDA does regulate everything and they allow for these names to be on your product. So maybe if you wanna find out, write to them. Anyways, the next thing that I wanna talk to you about is what we've all heard about, fluoride. We've been hearing about fluoride for like ever. They put fluoride in the water. They've been using fluoride since the 40s. Everybody uses fluoride, why? Because it's supposed to strengthen your teeth. And yes, fluoride, it totally can strengthen your teeth. But here's the issue with fluoride. Fluoride um, can actually, is actually can cause headaches, nausea, vomiting. Um, and you know what's the real kicker? 
the amount of fluoride that is needed to remineralize your teeth, which is why they tell us they put it inside the toothpaste, is not in over-the-counter toothpastes. It's not there. You cannot, they do not put enough of it. You cannot get enough fluoride in a commercial-based toothpaste to even warrant why they put this chemical that has been said that if you consume too much of it, you need to call poison control because it's bad. It's been linked to all sorts of intestinal issues, that sort of thing. They've, it's not even enough in there. So they brainwash us. They tell us, oh, you gotta have this thing. You gotta have this thing. Yet this thing isn't even doing what it is that they told us that it was supposed to do. I don't get it. You know, um, what do we put in to remineralize our tooth polish? That food grade diatomaceous earth, that birch xylitol, which your dentists do tell you to use, but we use it made from birch. Most xylitols are made from corn. We use it from birch because it's less, because it's natural, it's less processed, it's kosher, all these other wonderful things. It's non-GMO. Um, but anyways, that those are the things, and the calcium carbonate, those are the things that will truly remineralize your teeth. Fluoride in the amounts in your over-the-counter toothpaste is not doing it. That's why so many of you are brushing like crazy with this fluoride-packed toothpaste and you're still giving cavities. Okay, your kids are still getting cavities because the fluoride that you're, you think you're doing isn't enough. Now, if you take separate fluoride treatments and you do separate methods of getting fluoride, you will get enough of it. Um, I'm sure that there are good reasons why in certain things where you do need it, but under normal circumstances, the fluoride is doing nothing for you. It doesn't really help you. So really question, why am I putting it? in or why is it in a product that I'm using all the time. The next thing that's in many of these tooth polishes, in addition to that, um, the trice, uh, what, I, what was that first thing I said? Um, the titanium, titanium dioxide that gives a color, the white color, are artificial colors. Artificial colors to make it blue, artificial colors to make it red, artificial colors to make it this level of green, all that stuff. Well, you know, artificial colors are really bad for you. Um, they've been linked to behavioral issues, they've been linked to um, ADHD, and there are even a lot of, um, in 2012, a study by neurotherapy, <laughs> therapeutics have said that even in children who have not been diagnosed with ADHD, artificial colors have an impact on them. So again, why is it in toothpaste? Why do we need something that is a chemical in toothpaste? Go food grade. Um, the next thing is abrasive ingredients. Abrasive ingredients can actually irritate your gums. It can lead to receding gums. Um, it can actually hurt your enamel and scrape your enamel, which open it up to cavities. And now you've got the fluoride that doesn't really do anything in the scraped teeth, so you're actually opening yourself up to chemicals, because to cavities, because a lot of what they use in traditional toothpaste is hydra hyd hydrated silica. Silica is a more of a rock substance. It is not something that melts, and um, it can actually irritate your skin, your gum, I mean. Um, it's too rough. So what do we use to um, give that abrasiveness? The food grade diatomaceous earth that I talked to you about. Here it is. It's very fine. Very, very fine. I don't know if you can kind of see it dropping down. Very, very fine. Um, and we also, we grind up. So this is in, it's not, I don't know if you can see, it's a bit gritty. Um, xylitol is a bit gritty. But what we do is we actually grind it up and put it in the tooth polish. So, and it melts, Xyl xylitol melts with the liquid in your mouth and everything else, it melts. So these are the abrasive, in abrasive ingredients that we use to help rub away the um, biofilm which is needed so that then the remineralizing agents can be absorbed into your teeth, but they completely break down and melt away. So unlike hydrated silica that can actually scrape your enamel and your gums, these things are not going to hurt you. Um, but that's what we use instead. The next thing that's in many toothpaste is that thing that we've all heard about, parabens. Parabens, parabens, parabens. That is a pest, I mean, it is a preservative. Um, parabens disrupt your hormones. Parabens, um, while they use them in safe amounts, or so they tell us, Parabens can store up in your system. So repeated use, i.e. using it every day and every morning and maybe a few times throughout the day as you brush your teeth, 
storing up of the parabens have been linked to um, obviously breast cancer, um, different carcinogens. So it's not good for you. We don't use that. We don't actually don't use any preservative in our tooth polish. We don't put any water in it, so therefore we don't need the preservatives, um, which is the best way to go. If you can avoid preservatives of any kind, that's the way you wanna go. Um, when we do use preservatives in any Quench Naturel product, we always go for a plant-based preservative. There are ways to have full spectrum preservatives that kill the bacteria and that are not chemical based, that are not harsh. Um, the next ingredient that I wanted to look at was the saccharin. Um, both saccharin and, um, yeah, saccharin, I'm sorry. Saccharin is a sweetener. We've all heard about it. It's going back to the 70s. I think later on they talk about aspartame. Same thing. These are sweeteners. These are things that have been um, known for a very long time to be linked with carcinogens. Saccharin specifically, if it's um, you have too much of it, it can cause co uh, coughing, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Everybody's system is different, so what's too much for me might not be too much for you, and vice versa, the person next to you, that sort of thing. So you don't really know what is too much, but it is not unknown. Um, while saccharin, there have been no studies that have directly linked it to cancer in humans. It has been directly linked to cancer in rats. So it's not too far of a stretch to think that possibly this thing could be bad for humans. Um, carrageenan. Um, carrageenan is also known as Irish moss. It is from a red seaweed. It is a thickener. Um, this thickener causes inflammation um, in the colon. It causes, it causes inflammation in the colon. It causes ulcerations. Um, many people have reported intestinal distress. Um, it, um, when degraded, it can turn into a carcinogen. So during the processing of your tooth polish, it's very easy for good carrageenan to come into contact with degraded carrageenan that have already passed through that machine that's pumping it through, mixing it up, pumping it into that tube. Some of that stuff that gets old or maybe doesn't get completely cleaned off or whatever else can break down. What has broken down can easily get mixed into what is new. You can't tell the difference, but it is, it is known to be a carcinogen. So, just things to think about. Why would you want to even use something like that? We don't use any thickeners. What we do use, we use coconut oil. Coconut oil will naturally thicken when it's cold, liquefy when it's warm, and we under, we figure you can understand that instead of having a base, a paste with all these different ingredients in and an artificial thickener, Coconut oil is much better. In addition to being what holds all of our ingredients together, coconut oil is also a natural detoxifier. Some people may have heard of um, pulling, where you hold the coconut oil in your mouth and swish it around for like 20 minutes and you spit it out and all these this nastiness comes out of your mouth. Well, we use it as our base. So as you're brushing, you are getting some of that pulling. If you wanted to take our tooth polish and actually swish it around your mouth, not only would you get the pulling effects of the coconut oil, but you would also get the antibacterial, the antifungal, antiseptic effects of the organic essential oils that we use. Organic essential oils are going to balance the natural chemistry of your mouth. And so what that means is that it's killing the bacteria that should be gone while maintaining certain levels of bacteria that need to be there in order for you to properly digest and process the food and the different things that enter your body. Um, so chemical thickeners, get rid of them. There's no purpose in them. I think I have a little bit of white stuff on my nose. Anyways, um, the next thing that I wanted to look at is diethylmethylamine. Diethanolamine. I can't even say it. I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. <sighs> I'm not good at saying these words, but it is a foaming agent. It EWG, which by the way, we rate all, we vet all of our ingredients with EWG, Environmental Working Group. They are a watchdog group that originated in Europe. As most of you are aware, Europe has um, much more stringent um, 
much more stringent guidelines on what is allowed in food and pesticides and all these different things. EWG does that. If you get inside your email the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 12 that talk about what um, vegetables, fruits and vegetables you need to purchase organically and ones, ones you can kind of get away with not doing organically, that is EWG who puts it out. They also look at chemicals within body care. We vet all of our ingredients with EWG and we use only level one rated products. I take that back. We have one um, preservative that we use that is a level three, which is still very low on that one to 10 scale and still in the acceptable rate. And we use it in one particular of our products because it's super intense with about 12 to 15 different herbs in it. And those herbs, when they're mixed with oil, want to grow and sprout. And we don't think you want to have a sprouted product. So we use a plant-based, but a level three um, preservative in that. And um, anyways, other than that, everything else we use is either preservative free or uses a level one. And all of our ingredients rate level one with EWG. This thing that I couldn't even pronounce, it rates a full blown 10. It's bad stuff. And it's in many commercial tooth polishes. This doesn't make any sense, guys. Um, anyways, that's the kind of rundown real quick of all the different chemicals that are in commercial tooth polish. So what do we put in ours? As I showed you real quick, we put all of these food grade ingredients into our tooth polish and it makes a better polish. Um, as I said back here, every ingredient has a purpose. So I talked to you about the coconut oil, which is our binder, but also a toxin puller. I talked to you about food grade diatomaceous earth. This is a toxin puller and it is a remineralizer. Our um, Birch xylitol, which is less processed, non-GMO, non-GMO. Do not use things that are GMO if you can avoid it. Um, we use birch xylitol. It is a remineralizer. Um, calcium carbonate. It is a remineralizer. Those three remineralizing agents help to remineralize your teeth and fight off cavities. We have had people actually use it and they start to feel a little tinge. They use this, that tinge goes away. They have actually headed off a cavity using our remineralizing agent. Here's the key that's big deal about this. Many or pretty much every natural toothpaste that uses the calcium carbonate, which we use, it's a good ingredient, they put in vegetable glycerin. So why do they put vegetable glycerin? Vegetable glycerin, there's nothing wrong with it. It is a level one ingredient, it is safe, all of those things. But if you've ever seen vegetable glycerin, it's like an oil almost, like a thick oil. It puts a coating on anything that it um, comes into contact with and that it's mixed with. It makes it pliable and able to stay in a particular consistency so that it can be squeezed out of a tube. So here's the deal. A lot of natural toothpaste, pretty much all the ones that I've seen use vegetable glycerin along with their calcium carbonate. So they'll be the first and second ingredient in most tooth polishes. Here's the problem. When you coat your mouth with this vegetable glycerin and then you have it mixed with that calcium carbonate, you're actually blocking your teeth's ability to absorb that remineralizing agent. So what we said is if we tell people that this tooth polish that you're gonna buy in a, to in a jar and you're gonna actually scoop, a little scoop of it and put it directly into your mouth will allow for your teeth and your mouth to be healthier and to be better remineralized. We kind of felt that you would get it and you would go with it and you would buy it anyways. You don't need to be told that you gotta have it in this tube or else it's no good. The reality is let's dictate what we put in our body, what the industry is giving us by making choices based on what is best for our body and not what is best for their marketing, for their shelf life, for what they figure tradition is, that sort of thing. We have the power to fight back and to change things. And that is exactly what Quench Naturel is doing. As a company, as a whole, we have come in and we have basically given anybody who wants to use our products in totality the ability to remove pretty much every chemical from their body care needs. Now you do this for a week, okay, but you do this for years 
your body is going to have less toxins, less chemicals. Your health is going to be improved. Um, bottom line, I mean, no, I don't have a big research project to tell me that, but we just know chemicals are causing a lot of issues. So removing them will help to keep many of those issues at bay. So we use um, that. The turmeric, this stuff is amazing. Okay, so not only does it really, it's an anti-inflammatory, which is amazing for your gum health, but it's a natural whitener. So people are running out and they're getting these chemicals and bleaches and they're doing laser treatments and they're doing all these things to make their teeth white, yet that strips your enamel. You're stripping your enamel, opening yourself up for cavities, and it's no good. Turmeric can naturally remove the stains on your teeth, so why do it another way? I will say, I've had multiple people come back and tell me that their teeth are whiter. I've seen it in myself, we see it in our customers, but on top of it, it's just a better product. Yes, it does take a little longer. You can't walk in, put this on your teeth, and an hour later come out with like sparkling white teeth. But what is it that you want for your health and for your overall mouth? You want something like this versus a whole load of chemicals and bleaches. Um, the next thing that we use are um, essential oils, organic essential oils. Again, I mentioned about how it naturally balances the bacteria in your mouth. There are There is such thing as good bacteria and you want to keep that. You want to get rid of the bad bacteria. That is what um, our organic essential oils allow us to do. We use a combination of these different things. Cinnamon is really great for your gums and your overall gum health. We put it into um, all but one of our tooth polishes. There are some people who have um, allergic reactions to cinnamon. We have given you one tooth polish that does not have it. We've loaded it with other peppermint and things of that nature, which is also really antibacterial, antiseptic, all of that, and help your teeth. But if you, in my opinion, can do the, the um, cinnamon, it's best to use one of our versions that has it in it. We put sweet orange. Sweet orange is an amazing um, oil for your oral health. We use the peppermint. That's wonderful. Obviously, it makes your breath smell great. So does the cinnamon and the sweet orange and all that. We also use tea tree, also known as malaleuca. Um, that is an amazing antifungal, antiseptic bacterial thing. We have had multiple of our customers come back to us and tell us, my morning breath is gone. Yeah, I know it is because you are changing the overall health of your mouth. You're not just brushing your teeth and making it feel clean for 20 minutes. These ingredients that we have are pulling the toxins, killing the toxins, getting rid of those things. Your mouth is going to be fresher. Your breath is going to be fresher. Um, your teeth are going to be whiter. Your gums are going to be healthier. All of these things come into play and it's all natural and it's all food grade. So what better thing to do? That's it. I have talked your ear off. I hope that you've learned something. And if you have something you want to share with me, please, I want to know. I want to talk about it. Um, if you think that this is really great and you want to give it a try, give it a try. It's really so go to www.quenchnaturel, N-A-T-U-R-E-L, that's the French version. Anyways, go to quenchnaturel.com. This is the name right here, Quench Naturel. And check it out. We sell it in one, three, and six month supplies. They all come with this lovely little bamboo spoon. Here's the big difference, guys. You're scooping it out of the, out of the container. You're putting it directly into your mouth. You are not adding water, no water. Don't water down the goodness that's in this. This is all food grade, nature-based stuff. Don't water down the goodness. You're brushing your teeth, it's interacting, it's pulling toxins, that kind of thing. Then you're rinsing. You still need to floss. Now I have to say my little plug, uh, Coco Floss is the absolute best floss in the world. Um, Coco Floss, if you want me to rep for you, please send me some info. I am in love with that stuff. If you know a better one than Coco Floss, please let me know, I'll give it a try. But Absolutely still need to floss, but you get rid of that chemical junk that's on that over-the-counter tooth polish that you're paste. I call it polish all the time now. That toothpaste that you're using, get rid of it. This stuff takes the place of it. This stuff will have you feeling like you left the dentist every day. This stuff will have your breath fresh. Not only your breath, but your overall oral health up 
110%. This stuff is amazing. Please give it a try. Go to our website, buy it, comment below. I'll have links on some of these posts with it, but give it a try. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate